Hi, everyone. It's Mary, your 90 day in 900 seconds host. And I'm here with my recap for season five, episode 10, which it's titled Time's Up, which in my opinion should be titled The Time is Just Beginning, everyone. Oh my goodness. So let's jump right into it. Kimberly and Uzman. So it's the morning after the big fight and things are really tense in the room. So Uzman's like, let's go for a walk. I got to get out of here. So they go for a walk down the beach and Kimberly's like, you know, we need to talk. I wasn't really happy about the way things went last night. And if I don't get sex, by the time I leave, everything is going to be done and over with Uzman. And when I mean everything, everything. That includes our friendship. That includes any financial support that I'm giving you. I mean, she didn't say it, but we all know she meant that. Everything, Usman, I'm cutting everything off of you. And Usman started thinking to himself, you know, this may not be a good idea. Maybe I should give up the deed to Kimbali. So Usman's like, you know, Kimberly. I think we're going to have sex tonight. But before that, Kimberly expressed her feelings about what Usman said about her son. And Usman agreed to talk to her son because he knows what side of his bread is buttered people. He knows that Kimberly is his butter and he's not dumb. He's not going to spoil the butter before he's done with it. So next scene. He's talking to Jamal, not before Kimberly does a little happy dance because she's getting the D y'all finally. So she does a little happy dance and Usman calls Jamal. They're on a video call and you know, Jamal, Jamal's, Jamal's good looking guys. Jamal's really good looking. He's on the video call with Usman and he's checking him out. And you can see by the look on his face, he doesn't trust soldier boy for shit and you know something if i was jamal i wouldn't trust him for shit either because he knows what soldier boy is up to we know what soldier boy is up to i mean the blind man that lives around the corner from me knows what soldier boy is up to but the only one that can't see it here is poor kimberly but you know like jamal said whatever makes his mom happy even though Jamal himself even pointed out that Soldier Boy makes his relationship with Kimberly sound more like a, an assistant relationship than like a girlfriend type relationship. But Usman was being his usual charming self. And Jamal just basically said, whatever makes my mama happy, I'm happy, but don't break her heart. So then we get to... I would say to date, one of the most cringe worthy, but iconic sex scenes to date of the 90 day fiance franchise. I mean, first of all, what was up with Usman dressing up to have sex? I mean, this guy puts on like a whole robe and he has his glasses on, his chain on. He comes out dressed to have sex, first of all. And I mean, Kimberly, I really think the producers do her wrong because they get these camera angles on her that are not very flattering at all. And when he finally climbed in bed and climbed on top of her, she was like, come on in here. I mean, that was a really cringe, cringe scene. That's all I got to say. And Usman, you're cheating on your baby girl, Brianna. What's wrong with you? I'm upset with you. I thought baby girl Brianna was your one and only. Come on. What's up with this? So soldier pronounces them boyfriend and girlfriend, which does this guarantee him another season? We'll see. Moving on. Memphis and Hamza. So Mem so Hamza is going um, wedding attire shopping with his mom. And let me tell you, Hamza looked really good in those um, suits that he was trying on. 
really, really good guys. So, you know, he's um, shopping with his mom and his mom is so wise and she is so nice. And you could tell that she loves her son so much. And she was just simply giving him advice from a mother's point of view, from her cultural standpoint. And she was just telling him, you know, Hamza, this whole thing doesn't, you know, like this whole thing doesn't stand with me well. She wants you to sign this contract. I feel like she doesn't trust you. You know, you're a handsome young man. You have your diploma. You know, you could basically get any woman you want. She was trying to tell him. And maybe you should slow down and get to know Memphis a little more. Because to me, it seems like she doesn't trust you. And it got the wheels and hums his head turning. Then we have on the other end, Memphis wants total transparency from Hamza, but she's keeping a secret from him. So she's on the phone with her sister, Ingrid. And at first, you know, she's, hi, you know, what's going on? And in typical Memphis TMI fashion, she starts sharing about her diarrhea. Her sister doesn't want to hear about her diarrhea. And we certainly don't want to hear about your diarrhea, Memphis. So she's talking to her sister and uh, basically, we find out that in the beginning of her relationship, for I guess about six weeks or so, or two months or whatever the case may be, her ex-husband, she stayed with her ex-husband for support because she needed moral, financial, whatever kind of support it was. And Hamza doesn't know about it. And that's another cultural difference. You know, Hamza won't understand why her ex is still involved in her life. And like she said, she has a child with her ex. So it's perfectly understandable why her ex would be involved in her life to a certain point. But of course, Hamza would be upset that she kept the secret from him, but she wants total transparency from him. So her sister advised her to come clean with Hamza. Then we get to their final scene of the night where Hamza is running around on the rooftop. I guess that's the way he trains. And Memphis comes up to talk to him. And um, the translator comes into play. And Memphis starts to try to tell him about her ex-husband. And Hamza basically takes the translator away and says, you know, I think we rushed into this whole marriage thing. And Memphis gives him such a look. I, you would think that like Hamza would have jumped off the side of the building. I mean, the look that Memphis gave him. And that's how their scene ended. And we see next week that like Memphis, you know, tells him about her ex and Hamza gets totally pissed off and storms away. You know, there's been a lot of rumors flying around the interwebs about these two that they are married and they have a child. And if it's true, I wish them the very best. But there are a lot of cultural differences between these two that have to be worked out. And I don't know if it can be, but I wish them the very best. Moving along and talking about it's just beginning, people. Jasmine and Gino. Oh, my goodness. And honestly, I'm kind of disappointed at the way this turned out. So Jasmine is starts off with she's heartbroken on the beach, crying her eyes out, and she's drinking people. And we know alcohol, rage, and hurt. It is a deadly trifecta. So she's drinking. She's angry. She's on the phone with her friend. She's hurt about what she just found out about Gino sending her topless pictures and this whole stupid argument about whether they were nudes or not. Gino, they are fucking nudes, okay? Doesn't matter if she wasn't completely naked. She was in a form of undress. They are fucking nudes, okay? You creepy motherfucker. I'm going to say this right now. Gino is a creepy motherfucker in my eyes, okay? So Jasmine is getting all riled up and pissed off. And she's on the phone with her friend, you know, and her, instead of calming her down, 
her friend is like, you know, rallying her up a little bit more. And she's like, you know, fuck this. I'm not going quietly. And she goes storming into Gino's room where she basically starts screaming at him. And Gino's like, what, what nudes? You were just topless. They were nudes, which is like total stupidity. They are fucking nudes. And um, Jasmine tries to rip his head off. So then the next scene is the next day. Jasmine's like, I'm leaving the island. I have to go back to the room to get my purse. So she goes back to the room. Gino's sitting there. And Gino's line this whole time has been, that was really stupid. It was really stupid of me. Yeah, no shit, Gino. That was really fucking stupid. So Jasmine goes back to the room to get her purse. Gino's like, sit down. I would like to have a chat. And before you know it, they're making up and Jasmine forgives him. Jasmine tells him that she feels like she doesn't know him at all, but she loves him and she knows that Gino loves her. And that's all she wants is to be loved. And like she says in her confessionals, it's going to take a long time for her to get over the hurt, but she forgives Gino because she loves Gino and she knows Gino loves her. And, you know, I don't think I could be that forgiving if I was Jasmine. And I'm going to be honest with you, my darling viewers. I was a little disappointed that she forgave him. I really hope I was really hoping that she stormed off that island and never looked back. But, you know, she loves him. He loves her. He doesn't deserve her. I think he's a creepy piece of shit. But, hey, if they make each other happy more power to them and I wish them the best but the season's not over and we have more time people and moving on so now we have Mike and Hermena so now off the show there's been some drama going on don't know if you guys have heard check out my trash talk for some drama but Mike has noticed a change in Jimena since he's been back from his Columbia trip. You know, Jimena has been asking for money because she wants to get her breasts done. And Mike's father and grandfather's like, you know, you've given this girl a lot of money. It's time for you to look out for yourself and your responsibilities and all that other good stuff. So Mike decides he's going to go back to Columbia and check in on her, his dear Jimena and see what's going on. So, Jimena says that now this trip is like different from the first trip. The first trip was like all romantic. She had hearts flying everywhere. But since Mike has been gone, she's had time to think about what kind of a clingy person he is and all this other stuff. So, first thing he does, he gets to her house and he tracks dog shit all over her carpet. I mean, the girl is like a neat freak. She cleans her house. Her house is spotless and he tracks dog shit all over her carpet. Good first move. Then, the, you know, the first night they get there, they go out to a club. He's tired. He wants to come home. She hangs out all night and stays out until nine, nine, nine in the morning. And Mike is not too happy about that, which her men are girl. I mean, I get what you're saying, that this is, you know, traditional Colombian thing. Once you go out to a club, you hang out all night. But I mean, your man is there for 10 days. You don't do that when your man is there for 10 days. So I don't know. Mike is like, I'm hoping, you know, that we connect. Jimena is like, he's clingy. We'll see what happens there. Moving on to Ella and Johnny. And now I know we don't see this couple very often, but she's really getting on my nerves. Like, she bought a ticket to go to Dubai. She's basically twisting this guy's arm. Like, I really believe that this guy, his concern is about COVID. I don't think it's not because he don't doesn't want to meet her or is coming up with a thousand excuses. I really believe that he is scared shitless about COVID and China's restrictions are a lot worse than our restrictions were at the time. So I really believe that Johnny 
just doesn't want to travel. But Ellis, like I've waited 29 years for the love of my life. Girl, there are people out here that have waited 50, 60 years for the love of their lives. Like, girl, relax. She's like sobbing, like I'm not, you know. And Johnny's like, um, if I fly out of China and I go to Dubai and I can't fly back into China, what am I going to do? Like, I really think Ella's being selfish and she just needs to slow, just slow the fuck down. We're in a pandemic and the guy has a child. The guy has elderly parents and you can't afford this plane ticket to Dubai anyway. So maybe you need to step back and slow down. But no, homegirl bought a ticket to Dubai and basically gave Johnny an ultimatum and said, you have a couple of days to figure out what you're going to do or I'm moving on. So Johnny meets up with his friend Wang and Wang is like, you've been talking to this girl for two years. The least you could do is go meet her in person. So we'll see what turns what turns out with these two. And on to our final couple, which I guess I need to stop using my air quotes because dun dun dun. Ben and Mahogany. Turns out that Mahogany is fucking real, people. Shut the front door is all I have to say. So he's sitting in the restaurant looking like Caesar or David waiting for Lana. And all of a sudden, you hear fucking footsteps. And here comes this chick. And, you know, she may have filtered her pictures. Her pictures may have been heavily filtered. And she may look nothing like her pictures. But she's very pretty. She didn't need to filter her pictures, first of all. Second of all, um, she is young enough to be his daughter. And she does look young enough to be his daughter. Okay, when he was hugging her in the parking lot, when they left, it really looked like that he was hugging his daughter. Like that shit was like creeping me out. So Mahogany comes in. Oh my God, Tiamo, blah, blah, blah. And you could tell that she is totally not into him the way that he is into her. That she is just kind of like, okay, this is creepy old dude. He needs to back up and whatever. So if they meet, they chat and um, apparently next week he's going to meet her parents. So we'll see how this all turns out. But I could just tell from Mahogany's body language, Mahogany is not into Ben as Ben is into her, which is totally understandable because Ben is old enough to be her damn father. So speaking of next week, Ben wants to meet Mahogany's parents and it looks like he meets them. Hamena goes tries on wedding dresses, but she gives Mike her own little ultimatum. She wants boobies first, then a dress. Gino, speaking of parents, going to meet Jasmine's mom. And Jasmine says that her mom means everything to her. So if her mom doesn't like Gino, that's it. Uzman is hiding something from Kimberly, and it looks like they're going to fight people. And Memphis lays it all on the line to Hamza about her ex. And Hamza's response is, you're crazy. And he storms away. So we'll see how this all turns out, people. Looks like we're getting close to the end. And um, Alina's gone. Great news. There was no Alina and Caleb. So they cut them out like they promised. Added them and cut their storyline. So. Alina's gone, people. That's great news. And um, that's all for my 90 days and 900 seconds. Please like, share, and subscribe. Love during lockup with Brianna tomorrow night. Please um, subscribe to Brianna's Nirvana for some meditation and relaxation videos. And that's it. Thanks. Bye.